Yeah, I know it's Monday. And here we go. Live? You are now. All right. It is Monday, April 27th. This is This Fan's View, Monday edition. And we have Carl, John, Lauren and Anthony, and myself. Um, I think we're going to be talking a little bit about the draft this weekend. So, John, what do you got? I'll go with you first. <laughs> we have um, our uh, who wore best game going going on still. Um, we have still, uh, still we're at, we're at number <laughs> three. We we barely <laughs> just started. John, John, come on, shake <laughs> the marbles, shake the marbles. I'm, I'm still I'm still shaking my head from the Eagles draft. I'm, I know <laughs> you are. I know you are. But uh, we had uh, number three. The winner was Allen Iverson. Thank a, God. And a nice little landslide like everybody was hoping for over uh, Bryce Harper. And um, and uh, what was it? Uh, Tom Bladen was the other guy that got uh, some votes. And we even had a uh, write-in vote from one of our favorite fans um, for um, Chuck Klein as well. <laughs> um, and tonight, tonight we got to get our votes in for number four. Uh, the Phillies, we have Lenny Dykstra. Uh, the Eagles, we have Jake Elliott. For the Flyers, we have Barry Ashby. And for the 76ers, we have Chris Weber. So, um, you know, make your comments throughout the show, and we'll tally it all up. And when when's voting end? Voting ends, well, we'll have to see. I mean, it should, should end at the end of the show, but, um, you know, we, we get heated in the show, and sometimes people forget to make the comments, so. Um, we we get heated in the show. We. <laughs> we we there's that mouse again. <laughs> four pretty good numbers, right? Yeah, four, four good mm -hmm. guys. Yeah, depends on um, which way you want to look at it. As far as uh, they all had some very good careers, and and still one going on. Um, so. Um, yeah, it, it, it should be a it should, tonight should be a uh, challenging. Uh, not not as much of a landslide, I don't think. No, I think it's going to be spread out. Yeah, at least between two. Yeah, it's, it's, oh yeah. I mean, they'll always end up having you know down to the ends, but you still have right. your figure throughout, throughout the teams. Um, so, who do you have, Mario? Who, who do you think's number four? I'm um, I'm going with the dude, okay, Lonnie Dykstra. Yeah, nails. What do you think, Carl? Come on, seriously, <laughs> Barry Ashby. <laughs> All right, I just had to check and make. We just had to get it clarified. Who, who else has their number retired by their team of that group? This is true. True. This is true. Right. Exactly. Exactly. I I agree with you. Who, who do you have, Sue? Barry Ashby. Oh, what a what a sucker! <laughs> you just went with what he voted for. We're getting we're getting a long we're getting along tonight. I don't want to <laughs> Okay, but what about Jake Elliott? Uh, Jake Elliott, what's he done for me lately? Ooh! Oh! Ooh. Oh! Okay, so how quickly you forget? I say. say I that. see. I didn't realize your name was John. <laughs> <laughs> Save, save that comment for later on there, Sue. We, we, we agree with some things there. <laughs> You'll get booted out of the room before that. <laughs> Police, what have they done for me lately? So, so what do you got, Lauren? All right. I have a few questions. Uh -oh. <laughs> so who wore it best? Is this just based on Philadelphia? Is this based on, like, ever? Because... Chris Weber clearly has the better resume, but by the time he came to Philly, eh, you know, he wasn't really that great. Um, I like you asking week four. Uh, I just, I just need some clarification. No one asked you. Um, I'm not voting for Lenny Dykstra. That would never happen in a million years. These other three guys could be duds and I wouldn't vote for them. Um, so that's out. I, I just, I'm not, I'm, I'm torn. Well, it, it's it's for who, you know, who were best, yeah. Obviously for Philadelphia. I mean, obviously there's some numbers that you're going to struggle with. I mean, four is obviously with having Chris Weber as, as as their nominations, not a strong number for them. Um, but they've they've also had some strong numbers already. You know, going on. All right. Well, I guess 
Go with Jake Elliott. You love the kickers. Yeah, I mean, I guess if we're going with the best to wear it in Philadelphia, I mean, I guess Lenny Dykstra uh, has a better Ooh. resume. But I, I got to go Jake Elliott. I can't vote for Lenny Dykstra. That can never happen. All right, let's, let's, <laughs> let, let's just be honest here. So Chris Weber had no career in Philadelphia whatsoever. Oh, those two years he played here. No disrespect <laughs> to hockey, but you got to be a super really good Bernie Prompt type hockey guy for me to remember anything about you. Uh, what else? Who, who you know, invited him in the was, show? Every you week? did. You <laughs> did. Every week. There is a previous show where you said, "Oh, I hope oh, he's oh. involved." So then, so then you get down to uh, Jake Elliott and Lenny Dykstra. Okay. Well, it's nice that Jake Elliott won a, a Super Bowl, oh, but he's here we go. he's still playing, and not many people are going to remember Jake Elliott unless he wins a couple more Super Bowl. Everyone remembers Lenny Dykstra. Everyone remembers the teams and how he played. That. You know, it's not who the best player was or who, it's who wore it best. And that's, you know, vague on purpose. And that's, uh, you know, that's Lenny Dykstra. But, but, but Lenny didn't win here. But that's not his Right, but point. that's that's your interpretation right. of right. how you interpret right, the Right, but you're telling that. me that Lenny wore that number best, but he wore it best when he was on other teams it, where he won, it, just like Chris Weber. He, he was good in Philadelphia. It wasn't his fault they didn't win. That... <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Right, vote, vote for him. Both All right, let's see. 86 Mets. Every one of them's a drug addict. So um, <laughs> 93 Phillies. They're all alcoholics. Yeah. But lovable. And you remember them all. You remember <laughs> them all. No, nah, he, he, he makes a valid. He broke it down. That's why he's on the show. Yeah, yeah. Probably, yeah. He's probably going to replace one of us one day. So be nice to him. <laughs> so I would actually, to be honest with you, I'd like to vote for a hockey guy, but you know, Bernie Pratt made it in good sense. But other than that, it's tough in Philadelphia. He was or number else. one. We're right, up to sure. four. Sure. We're up to four. Right, right. <laughs> that, there's, uh, Do you even oh, know who Barry Ashby is? No. Well, that doesn't help either, right? So there you go. <laughs> well, that's why you got to do a little research. We did. No, we, I, we, no, he breaks it down perfectly. He did. <clears throat> he breaks it down perfectly. There's nothing wrong with with his choice. You know, Mario was quick and decisive with the dude. You know, we knew you were going to pick the Philly guy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, La La when oh, you didn't vote yet? No, he didn't vote yet. When oh, Lawrence right. said earlier. Where's he been? He's sleeping again? When Lawrence said earlier, I know Chris Weber is a good player, but then I said, I don't think he played in Philadelphia very long. I don't remember him being a Philadelphia player. I mean, that was at the end of his career, so. Right. No, exactly. So who we got so far? So, so we got we got two Barry Ashby's, we got plenty of two Lonnie Dykstra's, and a Jake Elliott. Okay. John, you're up. And, and then I, because, because of the retired number, I'm going Barry Ashby as well. All right. Oh, look Even at that! I'm, as you can see, I'm still. I got. I'm playing fair. But I have to say, these comments here, it is going to be seriously back and forth. One minute is Lenny yeah. Dykstra, then it's Barry Ashby, then it's Lenny Dykstra. I mean, it is. Yeah, it's going to go back and forth. I know. I there would have been a couple more Jake Elliotts in there. Yeah, come on, folks. What about Jake Elliott? So <laughs> let's let's look at this a minute. Lenny Dykstra, the baseball player. Mm-hmm. Not so, uh, Lenny Dykstra, the person. Sure, well, correct. That's, that's good to start with. Okay. No, oh. seriously. I mean, if you're talking Lenny Dykstra, the baseball player, I'm I'm all in. Oh no, absolutely in Philadelphia, absolutely. I'm all in, but but he's done so much to take himself out of conversation for anything. Oh, he's Philadelphia. absolutely tarnished. You know, I mean, who well, goes looking for their teeth in a in a trash dumpster? Well, that's that's why when it's when it's uh. You know, who wore it best, you think of it more as like a uh, – you interpret that as a who's the better known name, who's the more – I mean, he, he's made a horrible name for himself, but he's also – if you ask nationally, that's probably the one name – I guess Chris Weber you know nationally too, but Lenny Dykstra everyone remembers from all that craziness too. So What happened sure. What happened there? Refresh my memory. He, he, he bought a bunch of car washes, right, in California? Yeah, and he had illegal immigrants working for him. Yeah, but he had it, a lot but, of like uh, – but the stock market tanked, right? In yeah, that he had all happened? these ba bad yeah. investments. He, uh, we're you're talking about Weber, right? No. No, he's talking no. about Dykstra. So oh, there oh, was Dykstra. Dykstra. No, no, Letty, Letty so had much all Saturday these, uh, morning um, that had uh, like Neil Cavuto and all the all the stock guys on there. 
he used to be on that like weekly. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, he, and then he just kind of like went off the rails crazy, and well, the stock the stock market didn't do well. And I remember he was interviewed, I think, by sixty minutes, I think, uh, before they took the house rate from him. And then you know he probably got depressed and got on drugs more than he was before, and you know it was just a big spiral out of control. He's on Howard Stern. You know they obviously had him on just because he was a mess, right? So so you know now he's making trying to make money that way. Um, when did he finally get out of jail? Uh, it's got, I don't know. A year or two ago? Probably, yeah, it's, Not, a it's, been, a, ago. it's been a while yeah. now. It's got to be like, well, there was that arrest last year for that terroristic. Uh, you know, <laughs> oh, with, right. the, uh, with the Uber driver. Yeah, right. that was, that was yeah. a year or two ago. But I feel like at this point, he's been out of jail for maybe 10 years or so. Cause, at least a week or two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, if Jake, if Jake Elliott, if they can win a couple more Super Bowls and stuff, you know, that'll be the probably the name, but you got to keep it going for a little bit. As a kicker, it's a tough, tough road for you. Oh, right. no, it is. I mean, and, and, and in Philadelphia sports, Lenny Dykstra, you know, as far as, you know, more known uh, recently, um, as far as between him and Ashby, you know, but Ashby's number was retired. And, you know, some people will say Jimmy Fox was a better number four. Uh, for the yeah, family. we had a couple comments about that. Um, so you know, it's um, you know, it's 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 a tough, tough, tough thing. But you know, you, you got to go with the guy whose number is retired. You know, I I would think in, in in a close decision. Well, that's why it's good. It's so vague because it lets you sort of make your own interpretation, which is good. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Um, somebody was asking why uh, Eric Bruntlett wasn't considered. <clears throat> Oh, he did. He did score the, one of the one of the runs in the one in games for the Phillies. And didn't he also have the uh, unassisted yeah. triple play? He did. So, yeah. Maybe that. Other than that, he did right nothing. <laughs> well, I mean, again, you know, number four is a tough team. We we had a lot of uh, guys guys there for. You could have had Eddie Wakus. Um, you know, oh. Eddie Wakus. He was he was the guy that the, the natural was made about. The movie. <laughs> We watch that movie. Just, just saying. I mean, number four was a little bit of a tough, tough number, and we went with a, a more current guy. All right, you don't have to explain it to me. I'm just letting you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, he does. He, he came up with this contest, so I stirred a pot. <laughs> yeah, we saw. We saw. So, who's number four jerseys hanging up? Can we get a little backstory? Hold on, that's Lenny's. It's a gamer? No, it's not. Oh. No. No, L L Lenny was my guy back in the day. Go Ooh. come in. Lenny was Lenny was my guy. Oh, okay. No, I mean he, I mean I, you know, how, how could you not like Lenny back in ninety three? You know, he, he he started the whole team. He started he's you know, then you got Dalton, you got Cruck that year, Hollins. I mean that whole that whole team was, you know, Hank Avilia. Somebody made a real good point that they should uh, do a documentary on that 93 team the way they're doing the Bulls right now. They yeah. should. <laughs> sorry, I, I started. I watched three, I think three episodes of that last night. That was really good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, that's a good uh, good thing. And, and, you know, like I said, I mean, and, that, and that's what makes this, this game fun. There, there is no, win, no right answer. It's, you know. You we'll see to... who everybody picks. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, but, so is that a is that a good segue into uh, into our next topic, which was uh, the last <laughs> dance last That's night? It. Exactly. <clears throat> yep, yep. Uh, we watched both episodes, so there's been four total now. Correct. Yep. Did they show all four last night? I think they, they might have showed the first it, yeah. two ahead of it, and then did three and four at nine and ten. Okay. Okay. So, I think I, I think I watched all four. Yeah, just my opinion. Just my opinion. I thought episode four was the best. Hmm. I thought episode four was really, really good. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, I, I, you know, it kind of, you know, they lead you, you know, they lead you kind of, like, you know, where's this thing going after they won the first championship? Right. You know what I mean? There was a lot of, you know, there was a lot of stuff back and forth, and I just thought episode four. Just my opinion. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm, you know. I wasn't a Bulls fan. How could you not be a Michael Jordan fan? Right. I wasn't a Bulls fan. Um, 
you know, but I, I just thought that was a great episode. You know, I, I think it's interesting how a lot of the players from the Bulls back then and the Pistons back then still don't like one another. It was the best. Yeah. <laughs> it was the best. I mean, you talk about, you know, grudge, grudges oh, and, you know, walking off the court and not shaking hands and, yep. you know, it just, you know, I just, I just, I just thought that episode four just kind of, Open the door for like, what's next? Oh like, yeah, what, what do they yeah. got going next? Uh, it, it, if you heard Jordan, he's like, yeah, he goes, I still don't like them at all. Right? Exactly. Did you ever no. think you would hear Michael say that? No, I did. Well, there's a lot of things I didn't think I'd hear Michael Jordan say <laughs> in this documentary that you're hearing, and and you know, cursing aside, but I really think you're sort of seeing him and his personality in in full bloom that I don't know you necessarily knew when he was a player. You know, the I fact that he, he didn't like Phil Jackson when he first came in because <clears throat> Doug Collins, you know, catered to Michael and it was all about getting the ball in his hands. And then Phil Jackson was like, slow down here. We're going to play as a team. And Michael didn't like that. Right. Yeah. You know, and then obviously fast forward, you know, if, if Phil Jackson's out, then so am I. So, you know, anybody can be persuaded, but it's just interesting to hear Michael Jordan talking sort of that like selfish, you know, well, I didn't like that because that wasn't best for me mentality when that, that wasn't always the perception of him. Oh, no, I think, I think it was always his perception. I mean, it, it was. Well, know. okay. Then maybe it's just the world I live in, but I never looked at Michael Jordan as this like selfish, like it's all about me and what's best for me mentality. Unless people just coughed it up to being competitive and, and, you know, really. Right into well, the game on a lot of nights he took the court and <clears throat> he had to look behind him to see if he had four running mates with him right you know what i mean yeah. like you know like who, who who's gonna who's gonna run the floor with me right. you know what i mean so i mean that's a lot of that came from like it's me and who else you know he started feeding john paxson the ball because john paxson could hit the shots Right. You know what I mean? If, like you said, if he didn't hit that first shot, he wasn't going to see the ball again. You and know, what I mean? pure, sure. pure and simple. You know what I mean? But no, you're right, Lauren. It, it, it's really giving you the backstory on on what it was like in in Michael's world. You know, we all knew he was a great player. He was chasing Larry Bird. He was chasing Magic Johnson. He was chasing a championship. That's why he left college early. Right. You know, because everybody told him how great he was. And they weren't wrong. No, but but you also but you also in that same respect as far as him being selfish, if you want to call it that, or you know about him, he also respected the game, which is where you have to also re um, agree with him as far as the the Detroit Pistons we walking off the court. Um, with them walking off the court, it wasn't um, wasn't right because I mean you saw the two years previous when Detroit beat beat the Bulls. He's, you know, shaking all their hands right there, you know, saying, hey, congratulations, go, you know, go forward. You know, we'll get you next year type of, you know, attitude that he had where they just walked away and, you know, basically gave him the double fingers uh, walking off the court. And, you know, not, 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 you know, not having the sportsmanship. I mean, hey, right. even, if, even if you walk off the court like you did, hey, get, you know, give him a, a slap, you know, even if you didn't mean it as much. Just, yeah, but that, 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 that Detroit team, I mean, that's the not shocking that they didn't do that. You know, Isaiah Thomas made it like, well, you know, it's because the Celtics didn't do it. Well, you, you really didn't do it because you're just, you know, that's how you were. You weren't good people to guys that weren't on your team and you didn't really care. That That's, that's the real reason behind it. So. Yeah. yeah I, so, I would, you know, I don't know if I'd hold a grudge this long, but I'd still, you know, I'd still probably mad in that moment that they were acting horrible like that. Mm -hmm. So Brian, Brian Brown wants to know if we think LeBron James is an all about me guy. Uh, well, I don't think I don't, it's fair I don't to me. About him. I don't. I don't know that it's fair that we we jump ship and start talking about you know LeBron because that's a whole nother that's a whole nother <laughs> conversation. You know, <laughs> um, you know LeBron's a great player. Um, yep. You know, I I don't I don't know. You know what I mean? And I you know I don't really want to dig into that tonight. If you guys want to. Um, well, I think we could answer that 20 years from now when there's a documentary about his life and they get to follow him around and I get to see all this insight into how I feel about him. But 
you know, yeah. on the surface. I don't know. I mean, it's so hard with these big, high-profile basketball players because it is kind of all about them because without them, where would you be? But they also have a tough time sometimes being a team player. Well, yeah. I, don't know, think, I don't think that's LeBron's issue, though. I, I, LeBron's no. you know, a little bit more, you know, put passing it off on the other guys if, if that's the right play in, in his mind. Um, so I don't, I don't know that, you know, what the, it is all about him though too, as well. Don't you know him. what the other problem is? I don't think everyone would admit it, but like, you know, it, it, during that time, I feel like everyone was watching basketball and let's be realistic. Not everyone watches basketball like we did then. So right. he, obviously it was in the nineties. You have all those great memories of that. He brought back basketball, all that stuff. So everyone's sort of got a very sweet spot for Michael Jordan, including me, number one. But I am not also not a good person to judge LeBron James because I don't know if I've watched more than two complete games because I don't watch that much basketball anymore. Right. So, you know, maybe a younger person might make sense, but then they also don't have the memories that we had. So, yeah, we might have to wait 20 years to figure out who was really better. I mean, I feel like from what I've seen, I've never seen anyone play like Michael Jordan did. And, when you know, if he didn't, I'm sure they'll get it to it after the, the next two championships, but – when they get to the episode or two that's about baseball, you know, what I think the Rockets might have won those years. The Bulls were in the playoffs with Pepin, but the, they, they didn't win. I mean, if he didn't stop playing, they could have won, you know, all those years in a row. He could have won like eight years in a row. I mean, that's ridiculous. Yeah. So I don't know any player other than Michael Jordan who said if, if he was there, you could have been in it eight years in a row. I mean, that's crazy. Get back to the LeBron thing a minute because it brings up a – you know, a good uh, conversation piece. You know, he left Cleveland. You know what I mean? He could have he could have done a lot of great things in Cleveland. You know, he left that city high and dry, right? You know, he wants to go to Miami and build a dynasty there. He brings, uh, you know, uh, who did he bring with him? Dwayne Wade and um, Chris, Chris Bosh. Chris Bosh with him to win a championship there. Then that wasn't good enough. You know, let's move, you know, let's move back to, you know, Cleveland and, you know, let's go to Los Angeles and let's jump all over the place. You know, here's Michael. Here's Michael. He was he was a Chicago Bull throw and throw. You know, <clears throat> he he, you know, okay, I'll I'll work with what you give me. You know what I mean? And he had some he had some pretty good stiffs as centers, you know, on those teams. You know what I mean? So, you know, but you know, you get back to, to Rodman with the Pistons and then with the Bulls. You know what I mean? Did he have a better career with the Pistons or the Bulls? There's a great question. Yeah. I mean, he, he won championships in both places. He was, yes, he did. He's yep. a whole, totally different person in both places. You could probably make the argument either way. Um, but, yeah, I mean, there, there's not a, I don't think there's a clear-cut answer. I mean, you, if you win championships in both places, uh, I, I can't answer that. We're, we're getting a lot of LeBron comments. Um, Joe, Joe Stinger did bring up the, the fact that he switched teams too many times for people. Well, yeah, yeah. That, that also, that's, that's the, that's the difference. You know, when you watch right. that documentary and you see Michael Jordan, you know, he obviously had issues with Jerry Krause. They were all making fun of him the whole time, but he stayed. Right. Scotty Pippen made no money until the end. He really didn't make a big deal of it. He stayed. He stayed. Right. That's exactly. the difference is these yep. guys, as soon as you can get paid now, you go get paid. And you know, if you're from Akron, Ohio, you would think you'd want to play your whole career in Cleveland. You know, yeah, you, you probably have to take a little bit of a hometown discount, but I don't, I don't, you know, I'm sure they were still going to pay you in Cleveland and you could have had a statue in Cleveland forever. Now you might get one at some point now, but, you know, you also could have stayed. You didn't need to go to Miami or anywhere else. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. That is true. So. Was, um, Wally brings up a point uh, about – Jordan and uh, gambling rumors as one of the reasons why he left basketball for those years. Um, was that the same time about the baseball? Yeah, he played baseball for two years. I think he got yeah, he to took off eight, eight, eighteen months. Yeah, yeah he played it. Uh, he played for the. Uh, I guess it was the White Sox then. It was the Birmingham Barons, which is the Double A yeah. for the White Sox. Yeah, that's still their most high selling. Jersey T-shirt of all time. They still sell that number forty-five there a lot. And his wow. baseball card sells for fifteen dollars too. By the yeah. way, you have any? Uh huh. I do. Do you? 
Oh yeah. What well, What was his reason for leaving to go play baseball? I, I, I think it was the gambling. It, it was kind of a hush hush. Yep. You know, okay. You're yep. going to get suspended, and he just said, "All right, well, I'm just going to bail out uh, gracefully, and uh, you know, take my two years suspension playing baseball." Do you think that comes out in one of these episodes? The way the way it's going, I believe it will. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think Michael doesn't seem to be holding anything back. He so I'm, no. I'm sure you'll hear about it. Sure. What I mean, what's he got to lose at this point? Right. Exactly. The man's Good worth point. like two point one billion dollars. Right. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Um, Jack, Jack said he was going to get suspended anyway. Right. Yeah, it was just a hush. When know. did when did his when did his father pass away? Was it around that time too? I can't remember. I remember he got. In that no, that was that it was, was uh, that was. It was after, after his career. No, no it wasn't after his career. It was as, when he came back to the Bulls and he right. won the championship. It was on Father's Day actually, and he was in the, in the locker room crying um, because of because of his father passing. I think during that that season, gotcha. so it was back with basketball at the time when it when it happened. Yeah. Uh, but I think you know he used it as the. Uh, you know, thing that that his dad always wanted him to be a baseball player too, and that's mm-hmm. why he, you know tried to do that. Right. Some, somebody did mention that he he uh, did state that he lost passion for basketball after his father passed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, um, I think I think as a as a Sixers fan, the part that I really liked, and Joe Stinger actually mentioned it, was that. Um, find it here that uh that Doug Collins doesn't get enough recognition Mm. just you know what he did what he did with that Bulls team um you know and and, I mean he probably really helped Michael Jordan kind of you know really fine-tune his basketball for those few years that he was there until Phil Jackson took over yeah what was he there two years two or Ray, yeah, think. yeah. I mean, it was probably good for him to to be there, but I think in the long run, it it was definitely better with Phil because then you let the whole yeah. team play. And well, that's easy there. to say because you saw what happened. Yeah, but if, if they would have played the same way and it would have just been him all the time, you would have ended up losing. Sure. You got to give those guys the ball. Yeah, I'm 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 not disagreeing with you. I'm just saying you'll never know no. what could have been with Doug Collins. And, it was and good I'm for sure. his career. I mean, right. he, you know, I mean it it. it Kind of pushed his career along, right? Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I, I think it, it, he he kind of limited himself a little bit, uh, Doug Collins. You know, as far as hey, Michael, it's, it's just all you. You go get it, and you know, so he needed to you know expand his coaching you know techniques as well. Is uh, he more like Gabe Kapler or more like Doug? Uh, <laughs> Peterson? What what do you what do, where are you going with that? I would say probably a little bit more than Gabe Kapler and 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 you know in Dougie's Dougie's range, but Dougie also had Frank Reich. In the Super Bowl. You're still you're still you're still fasting on those morals, huh? Nine and seven ever since. Just just saying. Since. Yeah. Since. since when we when we when Laurie takes this segment to the Eagles, I'm leaving the room. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. I'm leaving the room because I, I I've heard it I've heard it for four days now. I don't think I can hear anymore. Oh, uh, you'll, you'll be uh, here. Come on. So uh, we we can definitely segue to the Eagles, but I just wanted to bring up that um, Jesse commented that his father died in 1993, July of '93, mm-hmm. and left and Jordan left the game immediately after the '93 finals. Right. right. So it seems like it was a combination of things that really took him away from it. Makes sense. Um, but yeah, so, uh, the Eagles drafted players (laughs) Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And, um, I guess John will take it from here. I'm yeah, John will take it from here. (laughs) Can I, can I have permission to use my phone? Sure. Turn the sound off. He's He's probably trying to try to get messages I sent him. Um, <laughs> Are you guys texting about us to each not other? Right, not right oh, now. No, no. He, about, about earlier was comments. Were oh, I thought you were texting him right now. Uh, I was no, like, no, they were they, were. they were. they were going back phone. and forth during the draft. Let, let, let's just let's just put it this way. Do we all know how good any players are going to be? No. 
No. Yeah, the, the only thing I could say is we, as fans, that we could question if we're going to question is the first two rounds, probably. Maybe a third round, maybe as well, because we know that we know names, you know, as far as players. Once you get into the fifth, sixth rounds, do we really know who the players are unless they really slide? Right. Or you're a fan, of, you know, a fan of that team. If you know a Penn State, you know, player was drafted, we don't really know, you know, and and and, and I get that. And, and even in the first rounds, even though we're complaining about them, they know more than we do. I mean, we're it? we're complaining about them. And and are you actually <laughs> admitting that they might know more than you do? Oh no! I, no, of course they do. <laughs> of course they do. I mean, these are two like record-breaking statements that happen really quickly that I don't think we should <laughs> discount here. It's seven o'clock. It's Monday night, April twenty-seventh, and John O'Brien, you're about to get your balls broke. <laughs> <laughs> I'm there. But listen, uh, do they know more than us? Yes, they do. But that doesn't mean that they're right. I mean, look how many times they're wrong, with, especially the Eagles with their drafts. It's you know it's not like we, we went over to the draft. The, the first round picks haven't been stellar picks the past you know past few years. You know how he did a much better if you look at it, it like he did a much better job on Saturday. So maybe he maybe he just works better during the daytime and not at nighttime. It's just I, I don't know. It's He's just, like me. He only shows up on Saturday. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, Jalen Rieger, you know our first round pick. You know, he, he supposedly this talent that, you know, we, we can't pass on. But within this draft, we got three other guys that are just like him in later rounds. So we're building our team. Yes, it, it just seemed like they, they focused on speed, 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 which is, you know, the way the NFL is going. But you could have had another guy that could have helped you in that first round. Um and, 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 and in a different situation and still had those other guys that are going to take that spot um, where you don't have as many guys, you know, looking to be the same as, you know, you can only send so many guys deep, <laughs> you know, you, you got to be able to work the rest of the field, um, you know, and then the, the second round pick with Jalen Hurts. I mean, I, so we're just picking everybody named Jalen. Well, it's just, I mean, I love this talent. I mean, I, can I, I get in. Can I get in my two cents? Absolutely. Just, <laughs> just, just, just two cents. That's all. Sure. So this rigor kid. Yeah. Right. Little multi-talented. He can do a few things. So that's what they say. So you're reading the same thing I'm reading. You know that he special teams player. Mm -hmm. You know. Go fast wide receiver. So you're, you know, you've got an inch. You, you don't have anybody right now to return the ball, correct? Uh, return punts. Punts, uh, kickoffs, anything. Who do you got? Who are you going to throw at me? You know, I mean, you're not going to, you're not going to put Boston uh, uh, Scott. Scott back there. You know, he's, he's, he's now you a valuable piece to your, to your offense. Right, so he, you're not going to put him back there unless it's an emergency. So I, I just think the pick, I think the pick was, they were taking him regardless. That's what it. That's what it appears. You know, unless you know, unless uh, C D Lamb dropped to them at 21. Well, you know do what you I mean? Do you think they would have passed on Lamb and, and taken Rieger still? No, I don't. I don't. I said it, unless he had dropped to yeah. 21. Well, I know you I said. Just think, I just think this Rieger kid fits fits a lot of what they're trying to do, and they don't have anybody currently to do it. So, I mean, you, you just you know, I, I'm not going to say you're wasting a first round pick. You know what I mean? Because I think the kid, you know, fits what they're looking for. And then it, you've been telling me for a year now that Deshaun Jackson's not healthy. So, oh, no. you know, so here you go. You know, you need a deep threat. You know, and and he's your number one pick. So, you know, why isn't a good why isn't a good choice? Oh, uh, I just we have, um, a good, a good. we have a we have a good comment from someone who's right over your shoulder, Dad. Um, I don't know why she didn't just say it, but um, <laughs> so if we drafted Brady. You guys would still be complaining. <laughs> By the way, you, you might have drafted Brady because uh, how do you know yet? So anyway, that's what I'm saying. I don't know anything about football. I haven't watched football in about ten years. 
But what I'll tell you is that who knows what's going to happen until they actually play. Maybe you got all good picks. All right, look, we'll have a minor league baseball segment in a little bit. Just hang on, <laughs> hang on to your baseball cap. Just, just hang but, on. No, hang on. somebody does bring up a good point here in the comments. They traded for – they drafted for future trade bait. I, I See, I don't buy into that. I don't buy into that because that's, that's one of the notions that the second-round pick, Jalen Hurts, that's why they drafted him, to, to groom him and trade him at a later date. I don't, I don't buy that. I'll be honest with you. Like well, them to, to groom Carson Wentz while they're at it. Well, I, I think there's I think that there's a lot of questions being thrown out there. A is Carson healthy? Has he gotten over the concussion from last year? And well, you are told they, me before we came on that that was no. That was your insider reporting. Well, I mean that's that's one of the notions that's out there. That that's why they spent a second round pick that they would have a quarterback to go to and not not bring in some guy from, you know, you know, from some retirement home. So you're, you're not buying the two quarterback system. No, positively not. No, that's that the gimmickry in the NFL does not work. No, I'm, I'm not saying it would work. I think it would be horrendous if they did it. No, but I just, you know, you know that's one of the rumors out there. Well, there, so what is their plan for him then? Because him as a wide receiver? Let, gonna, let, John, let John jump in. He's chafing at the bit. <laughs> I, love, I love his talent. You know, I, like I said it before. I found it. No, 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 no. I, I'm saying it as a pick for the Eagles. I, I said it before the draft, and it, it may have been on our page uh, when we were talking about it. Um, you know, he, he might be the steal of the draft. He, he's, he's that, you know, talent, you know, type of guy. You know, there's you know some might might say he might be the, the new Patrick Mahomes type of type of player. Um, the show's being taped, right? It is, it is. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I mean, sure. But but what I'm, but my point was with him. Yes, we, we may need a backup quarterback because you know Wentz gets hurt. May or will? Well, he, he stayed healthy last year until into the playoff game. Uh, How convenient! Just when we well, needed him. <laughs> but, but the point is, we just signed Wentz to a five-year contract. Don't remind me. Jalen Hurts' contract is only a four-year contract as a rookie. So right. within, that, within that time frame, he's going to need to get paid big quarterback money or he's going to move on. So like, you, like you're saying, he's probably going to be trade bait or Carson Wentz is going to be trade bait. One well, that's maybe what right. you're trying to do is just see who's who's – the best maybe they, i don't think they necessarily have a plan maybe you're just trying to see who's the best and you go with who's the best you get rid of the other one well and, and, and that's fine and, you know but you know you you're, you're got to hope then when you do trade whoever that you get a better than a 53rd pick you know it's not like you 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 do that with a, a fifth round pick or a fourth round pick that the pick that you can still hopefully hey i can get a third round pick or i can get a second round pick for the guy and we won, you know, but now you wait, you know, not wasted it because he, he's going to help us, but you, you, you have a second round pick that's not helping you on the field as much as an, another second round pick could help you. Right. Well, maybe they're just that, maybe they might just be that unsure of, of Carson once then. And, and that could be, and, and that's it's either, either that or they don't trust Sudfeld either. Well, that, that brings up a good point is, you know, we're all worried about how Carson once feels. Well, Nate might as well just pack his bags. Well, exactly, and and that's the, that's my point too. As far as this whole you know nonsense, as far as we want to be a quarterback factory, what quarterback have we produced in this system under Doug? You know, Carson Wentz has has regressed mechanically. You know, you know, not not only you know health wise, not staying on the field, but mechanically, he's you know people are pointing out that he, he's not doing things properly so they're not even teaching their own players how to how to get better and now you want to you want to get you know guys and well here know, here's my know. argument with you and we've had this argument back and forth what talent have they put around him to make him that quarterback right to be better you know and and take those steps oh no i agree there but, but his mechanics aren't are, like you can you can put up numbers, you know, if you're mechanically sound. So now you're saying that, that he has mechanical issues that, oh, that Wentz, he's not. Wentz says, yeah. Is that right? 
Well, I mean, that's what. Where, I, 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 where's I, this I, coming I, from? Well, other experts are saying, and not not just me. You watch it in the games. That oh, saying, yeah, they, oh. they they no, they they do show that on TV. They show that he's not throwing the exact same way, and it's a little slower than well, he because, was. Because because they want him to be a pocket passer one day. They want him to be mobile the next day. You know, they they really haven't chosen the system and 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 allowed him to be the quarterback that they drafted. But, but isn't that's the point? That's why the factory is is broken. They're, they don't they don't have a, a plan. If you want if you want to be a factory, you should be. This well, is I think the quarterback has been broken more than the factory. <laughs> well, let, let's face it. You had to bring Foles in to you know to ride the ship and 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 make it happen, right? right. Josh McNown last year. You know what I mean? You know, come on. Yeah, but 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 ever since Frank Reich and Dilo Flippo was was he the quarterback coach at the time? Well, we can go back to your buddy Andy Andy Reid days. He brought in Jeff Garcia, Michael right. Vick. I mean, you know, and you had drafted mm-hmm. Donovan McNabb, mm-hmm. you know, as your as your prima donna quarterback. So these issues have always been there. Oh, this no. is new. This yeah. is not new. But but Andy Reid, I, I believe, is a better coach in in, in, in teaching. That's why we ran him out of here after 14 years because he's a better coach. But, but Andy Reid, Andy Reid was stubborn and wouldn't get wide receivers. And okay, he kind of, he kind of, you know, gave up on 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 football a little bit. You know, those two years when he was here. <laughs> Not according to Donovan McNabb. Well, he got he got rejuvenated when when, when he went out to Kansas City. So it is what it is now. What do you think actually happens? Because they're gonna. Let both those guys, you know, they're gonna Carson's obviously the starting quarterback, and you want this guy to play in, in, in you know, on the sides and do the best he can and see what he does in preseason and all that. But what do you think actually happens? I, th- I think we're, we're gonna be in, in trouble for a con- controversy, you know, because what, what, what what's, what's gonna happen is Carson's gonna get hurt, you know, J- Jalen's gonna play well, and then it's gonna be, well, it's Jalen's team, and you know, and, and, and then you're gonna be. You know, having this controversy, which we tried to get rid of with with Nick Foles, and we're right back into it. Uh, so, do you think he could fit into their trick play scenario where they set him in as a wide receiver, but he ends up being a quarterback? Uh, th- those will work at, at, at times. Um, well, that's what they do with the guy in New Orleans, right? Well, they just gave a two a two year contract worth twenty one million dollars to. Yeah, him. That guy. He's a different guy, though. He is? Oh, well, he, convenient. Well, I mean, he, he was an un, undrafted player. He, he's a special teams guy. You're not going to be putting this guy, Jalen Hurts, as a, as a special teamer, you know, for other things. Taysom Hill is, like, 30 pounds heavier than him. Um, you know, he, he's more of a tight end than he is a quarterback. But but he, he can, you know, play quarterback. Um, you know, and – He's he's talented for other option gadget plays like that, and you know. But they also just just signed Jameis Winston, so they don't they yeah. don't believe that he's going to be the guy as far as the backup quarterback for long term. It would be Jameis Winston, just like um, Bridgewater was last year. He didn't get the chance, um, so they they have Taysom Hill for a lot of other reasons, um, and um, you know I, I just don't I, I don't see it. As the same type of player, you know, it just, uh, yeah, I, and you know, it, it just like it, you said, it, 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 they're probably, you know, to be honest, they're they're probably just as insured as everyone else. They would like Carson Wentz to be what he was that year, and they don't know if he can, so they got to save themselves, and they'll say, "We'll figure it out. Whatever happens, it happens." You have to get rid of one of them. So, do oh, no. you think he's the push that Carson needs to be the best <laughs> that he possibly can be? I think it would help him a little bit in the pushing, but I think, like your dad was saying, it's more town. You know, it, it's more having those guys on the outside to be able to go catch the ball, you know, and not drop them as much. You know, I mean, Carson went just through for four thousand yards last year with with no wide receiver over five hundred yards. You know, it's the first time that that's happened. I mean, it, you know, he he's not it's not he he's not the problem. Um, you know, as far as talent wise, it's being able to stay on the field while, uh is, is his, you know, negative, if you want to call it a negative, which it is, you know, that he's not right. available. 
But is that is that his negative? Is that his problem that that he gets gets these injuries, or is it because he gets put in these bad situations? You know what I mean? Based on you know who's on the field, who's not on the field. You know, I mean, you look at the you look at the cast of characters that he threw to last year, right? Right. On the screen right now. <laughs> What's that? They're all on the screen right now. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm not privy. I'm not privy to that. I just, I just know that you just paid Carson Wentz a whole lot of money. Right. You know what I mean? I don't. A, I don't know how his feelings can be hurt having that kind of a bankroll. You know what I mean? Nobody, nobody said. He was losing his starting job or he was going to have to compete with this guy. You know what I mean? You know, what were the were the Eagles um, a little ballsy using their second round pick to, to, to bring in a quarterback? You know, again, maybe they know something that we don't know. You know, that kid's got a pretty good resume, pretty damn good resume. Oh, yeah. he's, a, he's a pretty good football player. Just just look at Alabama, Oklahoma, runner up in the Heisman Trophy. The kid's a freaking baller, you know right. what I mean? So, it, and nobody wants to talk injuries. Nobody wants to talk about, you know, Carson Wentz going down again. But but chances are, if that happens, guess what? You're now ready. You got somebody to plug in. Right, but that's well, that's a problem. Your, your second round pick is hoping that the first round, the first you know starter gets hurt is the only way he gets to play. No, I, I don't. I don't buy that. I don't buy that. It's just like in baseball. You know, you you your top two pitchers, it's one and one A. You know what I mean? Who's better, Zach Wheeler or Aaron Nola? Uh, that's a good Yeah, see? Exactly. <laughs> but football, you exactly. don't play two quarterbacks. Right. Well, that's the point. How many plays is Jalen Hurts going to be on the field a game? Five right. plays a game? Okay, I'll take those five if it means winning a football game. I'll take those five plays. But, but would you rather have a, another linebacker or somebody else that, that's going to be on the field? No, because you answered you answered the bell at the beginning of the show when you said how he did a fine job, three through seven, accumulating all of these you know other picks, and he's much better in the later rounds. And I think we picked up those players to fill those voids. Well, I, I, I understand that. I understand. I'm, and like I said, it, it, that's why, like I said, it, when I was being harsher on them, it was, it was the earlier rounds. And it, and it's just because we know players, you know, there, there was five or six players that we could have had in that first round other than Rieger and still had the, the same other talent, you know, in, in the later rounds. That's all. And what about the trade for Goodwin? And, and that's that was the other point. You know, you, you got Goodwin, it's just who's the exact same player as Rieger. A again, he's another guy that has to stay healthy, which which is you know you know a, a common theme here on, the, on this team as far as having guys that can stay healthy. Um, but you know, you got him for free basically. All you did was flip flop a six round pick. You know, it, so you, it wasn't you know, and he took on his contract, which they just extended a little bit this year. Uh, today, I think it was. Um, so, I mean, he, he's the same player as Rieger. So, you know, again, that, that was part of the, the, the question and why you're going to take Rieger. You could have had, you know, Jefferson as your slot guy. And then you had, you know, your outside taken care of with, with Jackson and, um, and Marquise Goodwin, you know, and, and then you fixed your, your, your slot as well. Um, and, you know, and people say that, you know, he, he's a slot guy, Jefferson, but Jefferson played the outside as well, but. You know, you're you're on a a top college football team. There's going to be other top talent as well on there, um, so you're going to move in a little bit. You know, in different spots to help your team. Um, you know, and like I said, Rieger could be perfect, and 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 that's all great. I mean, you know, and then in a year from now, we'll be like, I'm an idiot, which you know most people are going to say anyway. But you know, <laughs> no, not at all. No, you you bring up you bring up a lot of good valid points. There's there's. You know, I mean, everybody's been breaking it down. I mean, you know, Ray Dittinger thinks the Eagles had a horrible draft. Through well, and through. Through and through. My problem with Ray Dittinger, you know, is sometimes, you know, he needs to go in the locker room, you know what I mean, and see, and you know, see what's going on, you know, versus just looking at every Mel Kuyper mock draft that's out there. You know well, what I mean? 
you well, know, I just, you know, I, I just, you know, he just bitch slapped every every draft pick the Eagles took. Well, well, some of, some of them are reaches though. They, they, they could turn out to be good players that you know, and, and everybody's going to have their problems. So you know, like the, um, the the linebacker they took in the third round. You know, he's played you know a game, you know four years in college. And two of them at a major college, and two of them were in junior college, and, and you know, and, and then a game and a half in high school. Um, you know, well, that so high school that high school game and a half was cake. Well, right. you know, well, it was. That was cake. That was cake. You know, and and so you know, I mean, they're projects, and and, and you know, so I think that I think when people put negative things on it, not that they're not good picks, it's just that most of the guys are projects or backups that are going to be on the team. And, and we need a lot more starters. Um, you know, they, they got a, mu- a lot much, or if I can speak properly, they got a whole lot faster, you know, t- you know on, on, the, on the team. And everybody well, got, got young. They got younger. They got faster. Right. And, and let's be honest with, with ourselves right now. They were in a pretty bad spot last year, you know, with, with all the injuries that they had. And they were bringing, you know, I mean, Greg Ward Jr. was, where was he at the beginning? He was down on the depth chart, right? And right. you and I were, were, you know, for for half of the year, we were begging for him to get on the field, and you know, which goes back to our, you know, we think we know more than the team, you know. It's just, you know, it, you know, it, until the people show up and do it. Uh, right? I mean, I think Howie made a statement that he's not going to get caught, you know, not having, you know, extra extra guys, whether mm-hmm. they do the same things, play the same position, or the same player, you know what I mean? He's not going to get caught short like he did last year, right? And, and, you know, with, with having four guys now that can run deep. Well, let know. me let me ask you this, because this this wasn't even part of the draft, but it was draft weekend when mm-hmm. we had the opportunity to get Trent Williams from, from Washington. I mean, that, if you want to be pissed off at Howie for, for something, there's something to be pissed off at Howie about. Fifth round pick this year. You know great. what I mean? Because oh, that yeah. guy said, what is he, a seven-time Pro Bowler? Yeah, 31 right? years old. How, how nicely would he have fit next lining up next to Carson Wentz yeah. or Jason Kelsey? Right. You know what I mean. But blocking blocking for Carson, I yeah. mean that just that that was a no brainer to me. We talked about this, and when you know when he went to San Francisco, I just I lost it at that point. Right. You know, yeah, exactly. I just I just thought that this is crazy because you know maybe Washington want, didn't want to trade within the division. I don't know. You know what I mean? I'd have given I'd have given him a fourth round pick. Right. You know what I mean? You just offensive lineman seems to be a a bullet hole for them every year. Right. And especially so, your, left, your left tackle, then then you you know Dillard's you know again a back you know security blanket for for playing. So, you know that's my that's my two cents for the draft. Yeah. Like <laughs> so. Uh, you know the the John and Carl show is good, but let's uh let's <laughs> let's transition over to another day, another rumor swirl for when sports will actually get back to uh, real life again. And so, John, John, did we just get booted off the show? Yes, we did. No, you just got segway. Segway. <laughs> uh, so the latest rumor is that the NFL will start up in October. Um, but they're going to cut the bye weeks, uh, so that way there's not as much time uh, in between. So that's only a week. Am I right? Well, it puts it from 16 weeks to, to 17 weeks. Mm, let me try to find this here. Basically, because each team has a bye. So each, you get- right, each team has one bye, so they're playing for 17 weeks instead of 16, but I also saw the comment where they're going to cut out the Pro Bowl, which who cares about the Pro Bowl? Right. Um, well, that doesn't affect the season, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, it delays it delays the the Super Bowl. Super Bowl. It's right. always right. right before that. The week in between. Right. Right. Um, in, in a way, it might work, might work out better because we we need to get um, the Super Bowl on President's Weekend. So we had so we always had the Monday off. Okay, that worked out nicely. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know that this, there's any communication as far as, you know, fans or no fans, but, um, you know, at least that's kind of the direction that's going right now. I think that's uh, why they're waiting until October. Cause by then I'm thinking that's when 
Well, well if, 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 any of the sports, if any of the sports could have no fans at all, it's definitely the NFL. Um, so they have the best advantage as far as the, that goes. But, but uh, yeah, I – Right now, every, everyone's just being hopeful. No one knows anything. I don't think any – honestly, I don't think any of these sports are going to play, but it's nice to hope for something. I just – I don't know how you get 80,000 or 100,000 people together a couple months after this happened without without a vaccine or anything. I just – it's right. crazy. Take everybody's temperature before they're allowed in the stadium. Yeah, that'll, <laughs> <laughs> that'll go well. You'll have to get to the game real early. Yeah. Um, I just I, – I can't see going an entire nine months – Without sports, there'll be well, riots. No, I think I think they'll they'll the teams will figure something out. You might not be able to go physically, right? Um, but yeah, I don't I don't think there's any way you see nothing until 2021. Um, Jack well, mentions that he heard hockey starting back up June 1st with playoffs in July. The commissioner also put out a statement today that you know they're working on how this would work playing in a few different um, NHL arenas and having multiple games a day. So originally they were talking about using smaller neutral facilities like a college rink and stuff like that, but they've ruled that out because there isn't sort of that back of house need um, that the NHL needs for its players and, and broadcasting and all that kind of stuff. So they need to use NHL arenas for these games. So I think they're trying to figure something out um, to make that happen. And I think for everybody's sake, they're, they got to figure something out. I think they have the best, best chances is, and, 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 but they're also contact sports good just because they'll be playing during the summertime when hopefully knock on wood, it'll be hotter that the virus won't be around as much, but, but the NFL coming back in, in October, that that's right back when you're getting your, your flu season again. So um, I, I, I don't see that, you know, with all that contact, I don't see that happening. Like, like Anthony was saying, I, I just don't, I, I, I hate to be negative Nancy, but I don't, I don't see any of it happening. I think it's all fun and games to figure, try to talk about it all, but there's zero ch chance in my mind that they're playing all these sports. It's just, yeah. there's too many people. There's way, way, way too many people to bring them together. I don't care if you have guys secluded this, that, I mean, there's still camera people. There's still different teams coming in. Players aren't going to want to stay away from their families that long. It's just, I don't see it happening. So I know I know everyone wants it to happen, but just because we want it to happen doesn't mean it's going to happen. you got to be right. realistic. So are you thinking there is no, no. real sport until 2021? Nope. 2021. Hmm. Nope. Nope. I, I, especially, like you said, the hockey guys. Hey, he's off He's off the show. This is it. <laughs> he's done. <laughs> done. He, you invited he, he, him. No, he's done. I listen, brought him in. I'm kicking him out. Listen, no one, no, no one wants it more than me. That's how I get paid. So, I mean, really, I, I of course want it, but I, being realistic, I don't. All right. Well, well, based on this conversation, the NBA is supposed to be opening up facilities on Friday across the country, right? So well, they're going to certain teams, right? Exactly. So they're pushing the envelope hard and fast, right? But again, well, yeah, and if they're, the, if they're the ones that are the first ones to do it, then God forbid anyone gets sick, they're going to look like dummies. So no one wants to be the first ones, but yeah. if and they're going to take that again. risk, then they're going to look very, very silly. I mean, that's the one that's the scariest. You have a one basketball, everyone touching it, sweating all over the place. I mean, that's the scariest thing. So if they're wrong, then they're going to look very, very foolish. Yeah. And, and like you were saying, Alarm, if hockey's going to come back and they're going to have – you know, three games a night in, in at, at the Spectrum or, you know, down at Wells Fargo there. Spectrum. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how, how are you going to have time to clean the locker rooms out, like disinfect them between, right. you know. Having well, that's what they, they said they would have to factor that in. So I guess you're looking at games much earlier in the day. Well, of course. Yeah. So then they have time to, to go in and literally disinfect every single thing before wow. the next few teams come in. Right. And, yeah. And like you said, but if they have three or four games, you know, that's, that's a lot of, yeah, you know, cleaning and everything. And, and then, and then, like you said, it's just more of a contact. Like I said, I think the basketball and the hockey could get, possibly get away with it just because of they're only going to have a short season as far as playoff games. So obviously less teams are going to be involved. Um, and, and it's going to be during the summertime, if, if at all. And I, and like most Anthony, of them already wear a shield anyway. 
All right, but again, you said I don't think it's going to happen. But I mean, if if anything could, that would probably be the the sport that might be able to get away with it just to finish up the year. But which, by the way, I hope I, ho- I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm 100 percent wrong. It's just without without a vaccine, I just don't see how that happens because you're just going to re you know infect everybody. I don't get. Well, it. how does the WWE get away with it then? Well, they're, I don't know. They're closed. There's no one there. Those guys have, aren't on the road anymore. They've probably been tested for the 14 days. I don't know if they all live on that campus in Florida. Okay. I don't know. But, like, this UFC thing that someone brought up, I don't know where that is. I don't know if that's happening. I don't know if that's realistic or that not. Got canceled, that got canceled the UFC fight. Right. So, I think WWE, just because, theoretically, they have a campus that I guess the guys can live on, and if they've all been tested for 14 days and no one's coming in new, you can get away with it. But, you know. Let's face that it. also could be something where if someone gets it there too, everyone's going to have it. And, and let's face it, Vince McMahon's not the one that, that cares about his employees. <laughs> right. Well, right. yeah, I right. mean steroids and, right. and yeah. You know, so right. what's the what's the coronavirus when it comes to, compared to uh, steroids? Right, right. <laughs> well, that's the thing right now. Like he's, you know, the numbers I'm sure for WrestleMania and all this stuff are probably through the roof. People are craving live television, so he's making money right now. So. He's going to try to have it go as long as it can. I mean, if that's considered an essential business in Florida, they're going to keep going as long as he possibly can. Um, you know, so I, I don't know. I don't know how long that can go on without someone getting something. Right. Yeah, and, and it's a little bit more controlled, but it's also, like you said, they can, you know, he, he's not worried about, he's not worrying about his, you know, employees. Mm-hmm. You know, if, if somebody gets hurt, or, or, you know, gets the virus and, you know, they, they just move on and get an, another character. Yeah. So you know, Mike does bring up a good question there. I haven't watched much of it, but when you do watch it or flip by it, it is really boring to watch with no one it, there. It's, it's hard to watch. Yeah. Yeah. You can't get into it at all. It's, it's no. very boring. I don't know that I ever realized, and and this this will be my takeaway for the night, I don't know that I ever realized how integral fans were until they were removed from it. Right. Like, yep. I, don't, I don't know that you ever really paid that much attention, or at least maybe I didn't, to how much of a part they played. I mean, obviously in football, you know, I kind of understand that. But even even watching, like, I watch Ellen DeGeneres. There's no, no audience. There's no one laughing with her. She says something that's funny, and I'm just, like, laughing by myself. Like, I'm in <laughs> crazy I'm a lunatic, but like, there's, there's no one else a part of it. And the same thing with the late night guys, you know, Jimmy Kimmel, Jimmy found there's, they're just saying these jokes in their basement and, and that's it. And it's just it, fascinating because it, I don't think you ever really paid attention to that before. But it's got to be hard for them because they usually work off the crowd's reaction to what right. you're saying. Right. So I can't imagine it's easy for them. Yep. So, that's my takeaway for the night. <laughs> nice segue into into, into that, and the, yeah, into the takeaways. So, so then I'll, I'll I'll have I'll follow up with that and say, we're all Eagles fans. We all want the Eagles to do the best. You know, will we disagree with things? Of course we will. It doesn't mean oh! <laughs> it doesn't mean that we're not. Oh! Just just because we can we can you know disagree with with something we can we can still be friends. It's all good. No, we can't, John. No, we can't. We can't all be friends. You don't read Facebook. If we don't agree, we can't be friends. Well, that, that's fine, but that's not how I work. <laughs> when, I, when, I, when, I, when I joke with you, don't take it personal. It's all good. And good. <laughs> no crying in sports. Tony, what's your takeaway? I don't know. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I just want to go back to a normal life. I've had enough. I, 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 come on. Well, oh, I, I'll boy. say this. So, obviously, you know, at, at our level, uh, in the minor leagues, you know, we, we rely on people there. You know, all the fun things we do between innings, all that crazy stuff that we do to get people there. I can't imagine going back personally, even if we're supposed to go back, and, and not interacting with the crowd. I mean, that's what I got paid to do to get – those people excited and have all that fun stuff that we do. So for me, I just want it to get better so that we can do all that fun stuff. Cause at our level, that's really why people are there in the first place for the most yeah. part. So yeah, when you watch sports uh, and you see no one there, I mean, I guess baseball is the one I consider that would easiest to have that. Cause the other arena sports are big, super crowd sports. 
you sort of go on that. Baseball is easiest to not have those crowds, but at the minor league level, I just feel like it would be uh, tough. Um, so, well, is it any different than being a Miami uh, Marlin fan, where th- where they draw two hundred <laughs> people a night, so they're playing without fans? No, and that doesn't sound fun either. <laughs> Uh, Dad, your takeaway? My takeaway is right here. Andre Lacroix's book. Right here. Right here. If you haven't, oh, yeah, ordered, it, if you haven't ordered it, you need to. Uh, it's uh, it's live. I know a lot of people that had ordered through us uh, at Carl's Cards have gotten them today. Um, it's available still through us. You will get the book signed by Andre. You will get a... I'm sorry? Mario has his. It's just true. Yeah, Mario has his, right? Show me your autograph. Uh, uh, we'll get one. Oh, wait. I'm sorry. He told me he's not going to sign my book. Exactly, because wow. you, you didn't buy it through Carl's cards. Okay? <laughs> so al- along with that, you'll get a, a real nice uh, rare uh, card of Andre that he'll, he can personalize to you you'll, if you like. But right here, Andre Lacroix, um, What's the name name of the title? After the Second Snowfall. Mm-hmm. And uh, if you don't follow him on Facebook, you need to. He's a, he's a great friend to to all of Facebook. So that's my takeaway right here. Absolutely. Good, good job. All right, guys. My turn? Yep. Okay. So I have a couple takeaways. Uh, as far as the rest of the year goes in general, we're, we are in what I call the Heisenberg Syndrome, which is the theory of the unknown and uncertainty, which is basically where we're going to be at probably for the next couple of months. Um, as far as the Eagles go, I, I think they're going to surprise us. I'm, I'm going to be Mr. Positivity here and say they did everything they did for a reason. And that's, that's about all I got to say. I think, I think they're going to surprise us. They're going to do good things this year. If they get to play. I like it. Mario. I like it. Uh, Look. Check, check so your shirt. You got a little Kool-Aid dripped on there. <laughs> <laughs> that a boy. That a boy. What like can I say? It. I like it. I'm being Mr. Positivity with all this. I gotta, gotta think they have they have something planned for what they did. Otherwise, they're just idiots. So this world yeah. is really ending, Mario. You just became Mr. Positivity. <laughs> <laughs> versus, I'm versus, positive in my own way. What's that? Versus John as Mr. Irrelevant. <laughs> so we switched roles today, John. Somebody's got to be. <laughs> and uh, who would like to introduce Wednesday's guests? Because we are seven minutes past our time. So who's got it? John. S- s- on Wednesday, we're going to have a special guest. Uh, she is a mother of one of our. Uh, prospects, Connor Brogdon, his, his mom, Stephanie Brogdon, is going to be on the show talking about minor league baseball. Uh, right mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it'll, be, it'll be the Stephanie and, and AP show that week, that day. There you, you know? go. <laughs> there you and, go. Uh, yeah, well, I, was talk, I was talking with her earlier today, getting her set up ready for the Zoom meeting and uh, stuff. And uh, she, she had some interesting stories about what the, what the players go through now. So, uh, You'll have to check in on that, and it'll be it'll be a good good time. Sounds uh, awesome. Good. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Can't wait. All for right. That. So All right. until Wednesday, don't forget. Get your so vote. When's when's voting going to end, John? Well, we we got to make sure everybody votes. I, I I'm going to be checking the votes right now and, and tally them up. And you know, if, if 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 I see people weren't voting, we'll extend it again. But uh, well, why don't we just extend it another 24 hours right now? Yeah. There you go. Till 7:30 tomorrow night. Let's there do it. Go. All right. Sounds It'll good. It'll give you something to do all day tomorrow. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll, we'll do that. And then we'll do that for every, every show going forward. And we'll just have the extra day just to make sure everybody gets their votes in. Because, you know, once we get into it in the in depth conversations, Lawrence, Lawrence, and you have all the comments going, you know, people, people forget to, to make the uh, votes. Right. So, uh, next week we'll have, you know, you have this week we have Jake Elliott, Lenny Dykstra. Uh, Barry Ashby and Chris Weber. The vote. You going to put a separate post out there just for that? We will. Well, I did it yesterday or the last week. We we did that, um, and then um, 
And then we'll have. Uh, it's not true, Bill. I got my my shirt on. <laughs> and then we'll have game uh, number five. Will be next on Wednesday's show as well. We'll be doing number five, which number will be seven, nice. number seven or number fifteen. You got your pick. Number oh, seven oh. or number fifteen. <laughs> we'll go on fifteen for a little clock. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, you got you got another retired number, Bill Barber. I mean, you got it. You know. Well, you really you really have swung the pendulum, haven't you? <laughs> I mean, you know, yeah, everybody just thinks I'm a baseball guy, but I'm I'm well rounded. All right, I think we should end the show on that note. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, see you Wednesday. Great, great night, guys. All Thank right. you.